Have you ever wondered how Jesus truly challenged the rigid and hypocritical norms of his time? In the cultural and social context of the society in which Jesus lived, women faced a series of challenges and restrictions. They were often seen as men's property, with little autonomy over their lives and decisions. In the specific case of adultery, the consequences were especially severe for women. Marital fidelity was considered fundamental to family and social stability, and infidelity was seen as a serious violation of this established order. On the bustling and dusty afternoon in Jerusalem, during the celebration of the tabernacles, an intriguing scene unfolded before the eyes of the attentive spectators. Amidst the murmurs of the crowd and the anxious looks of the religious leaders, a woman was dragged to the center of the square, her shame exposed before all. She was accused of adultery, a transgression that, according to the law of Moses, could cost her life. The Pharisees and scribes, with their immaculate robes and stern countenances, presented her before Jesus, seeking a word of condemnation that would justify their own strict interpretation of the law. However, instead of an immediate response, Jesus surprised everyone with an unexpected gesture. He stoops down and begins to write on the ground, temporarily ignoring the issue at hand. This intriguing action not only grabs everyone's attention, but also establishes the foundation for one of the most memorable and significant moments in Jesus' life and teachings. The story of the adulterous woman and Jesus' action of writing on the ground would become a lasting symbol of forgiveness, mercy, and divine understanding in the face of relentless human justice. Before delving deeply into the story of the adulterous woman and Jesus' powerful action of writing on the ground, it is crucial to understand the historical and religious context in which this event unfolds. We are in first century Jerusalem, a vibrant and culturally rich city, but also a cauldron of political and religious tensions. The Jewish people live under the rule of the Roman Empire, an occupation that fuels feelings of resistance and longing for a messianic liberator. In this scenario, Jewish religious law plays a central role in everyday life, dictating norms of conduct, rituals, and social practices. The scribes, as the self-appointed guardians of the law, hold a prominent position in Jewish society. They are the interpreters and enforcers of Moses' law, charged with maintaining religious purity and orthodoxy. However, their interpretation of the law often becomes rigid and legalistic, focused more on outward observance than understanding the spirit of the law. It is within this context that we find the adulterous woman being brought before Jesus as a pawn in a game of religious power and authority. The celebration of the Tabernacles, or Sukkoth in Hebrew, was one of the most important festivals in the Jewish religious calendar. The Tabernacle was a mobile structure, a kind of portable sanctuary used by the Israelites during their journey through the desert after their liberation from Egypt. Described meticulously in the book of Exodus, it served as the central place of worship and encounter with God. The tabernacle consisted of two main parts, the Holy Place and the Holy of Holies. In the Holy Place were the Altar of Incense, the Table of Showbread, and the pure gold lampstand. In the Holy of Holies, the most sacred place was the Ark of the Covenant, containing the tablets of the law given to Moses on Mount Sinai. The tabernacle symbolized God's presence among his people and was where the Israelites offered sacrifices and sought forgiveness for their sins. During this seven-day festival, the Jews built temporary booths called Sukkot in memory of their ancestors' pilgrimage through the desert. The booths were made with natural materials, such as branches of trees, and symbolized the people's dependence on God during their journey. During the festival, the Jews also performed worship ceremonies and offered sacrifices in the Temple of Jerusalem. It was a time of joy and gratitude where families gathered to celebrate the harvest and God's faithfulness in providing for their needs. The Feast of Tabernacles also had a prophetic significance, pointing to the future restoration of Israel and the establishment of the Kingdom of God on earth. 
In the midst of this festive atmosphere, the Pharisees and scribes, religious leaders of the time, set a trap for Jesus, knowing that he was known for his compassion and teachings that challenged traditional interpretations of the law. They brought a woman caught in adultery before him, gathering a crowd to witness the event. In doing so, they hoped to put Jesus in a difficult situation. If he agreed with Moses' law, which required the stoning of the adulteress, he might appear insensitive to mercy. If he opposed the law, he could be accused of disrespecting religious traditions. It was a cunning tactic to discredit Jesus before the people or at the very least undermine his moral and religious authority. The trap set by the Pharisees and scribes reveals not only their political cunning, but also their lack of understanding of Jesus' true teachings and his message of love and forgiveness. In the cultural and social context of the society in which Jesus lived, women faced a series of challenges and restrictions. They were often seen as men's property, with little autonomy over their lives and decisions. In the specific case of adultery, the consequences were especially severe for women. Marital fidelity was considered fundamental to family and social stability, and infidelity was seen as a serious violation of this established order. The cultural and social norms of the time dictated that adulterous women were liable to severe punishment. Often, these punishments culminated in public executions, such as stoning to death. Additionally, adulterous women were often stigmatized and marginalized by society, facing ostracism and discrimination, even after serving any imposed punishment. In this context, the reaction of the accusers of the adulterous woman reflects the dominant mentality of the time, where women were often disproportionately blamed for sexual transgressions, while men often escaped any serious consequences. For their own inappropriate behaviors to the scribes and Pharisees, the situation was an opportunity not only to test Jesus, but also to reinforce their own moral and religious superiority before the people. Faced with the trap prepared by the Pharisees and scribes, Jesus responds in an unusual and profound manner. Instead of immediately engaging in the debate about the fate of the adulterous woman, he chooses a seemingly simple but loaded gesture. He stoops down and begins to write on the ground. This disconcerting gesture not only demonstrates his authority and mastery over the scriptures, but also serves as a turning point in the narrative. While the crowd awaited a direct response from Jesus, he opts for an action that diverts attention from the immediate discussion and invites reflection. The act of writing on the ground not only pauses the impending confrontation, but also creates a space for contemplation and self-evaluation. It's as if Jesus, with his gesture, invites both the accusers and the crowd to look inward before passing hasty judgments. This singular attitude of Jesus highlights not only his wisdom and insight, but also his compassion and desire to teach in a transformative way. What he writes on the ground remains a mystery, but the emotional and spiritual impact of this gesture is evident, marking a crucial moment in the narrative and in the life of the adulterous woman. Some theologians suggest that Jesus could be making symbolic references to the scriptures or to Moses' law itself, highlighting the need for a deeper and more compassionate interpretation. Others speculate that he could be writing the individual sins of the accusers, confronting them with their own hypocrisy and impurity. Regardless of what was written, the gesture itself conveys a powerful message of introspection and reflection. At the same time, Jesus' act demonstrates his authority over the law and the scriptures. His ability to rise above the legalistic interpretations of the Pharisees and scribes shows that he is not merely subject to the rules, but is the master of them. He not only knows the law, but transcends it. Faced with Jesus' provocation, the air became tense, as if time had stopped at that crucial moment. His eyes met those of the accusers, and serenely Jesus asked aloud, Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone. These words cut through the silence like a sharp sword, piercing the consciences of the Pharisees and scribes gathered there. 
the weight of hypocrisy and lack of compassion hung over them, making each stone they carried heavier. One by one, the accusers began to feel the weight of their own guilt, their consciences hurting them more than any thrown stone could. The ensuing silence was deafening as none dared to claim a purity they knew to be an illusion. Slowly, as if awakening from a trance, they began to withdraw, their heavy footsteps echoing on the dusty ground. As the accusers retreated, Jesus' gaze followed them, filled with compassion and sadness for the spiritual blindness that had consumed them. There, in that scene of judgment and condemnation, he revealed not only the true nature of the law, but also the essence of his message of love and mercy. His defiant response exposed the hypocrisy of the religious leaders and confronted them with the reality of their own fragile and flawed humanity. In that moment, Jesus not only saved the life of the adulterous woman, but also offered a chance for redemption to all present, inviting them to look within themselves and find true redemption, which can only come from a heart transformed by divine grace. Then, amidst the quietness enveloping the surroundings, Jesus approached her with a serenity that seemed to emanate an aura of peace and compassion. His eyes conveyed a deep empathy, an understanding that surpassed words. He didn't need many gestures to express what was in his heart. With a gentle yet firm voice, Jesus addressed the woman, whose eyes still reflected the fear and shame of her past. He said, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more. Each word echoed like a melody of hope, a promise of renewal and restoration. It was as if at that moment the chains of the past had been broken and a new path opened before her. This declaration from Jesus was an invitation to deep personal transformation. He not only absolved the woman of her guilt, but also encouraged her to follow a new path, to walk a road of righteousness and redemption. His eyes conveyed unconditional love an acceptance that transcended any past mistake or failure. It was as if, at that moment, the woman felt the weight of judgment and condemnation being replaced by liberation and renewed hope. The story of the adulterous woman fits perfectly into the broader context of Jesus' ministry and his message of redemption, love, and grace. From the beginning of his ministry, Jesus emphasized the importance of love and mercy, challenging the religious and cultural norms of his time. He often clashed with religious authorities not to abolish the law, but to reveal its true purpose and meaning. This narrative also invites us to reflect on the nature of divine law and its relationship with justice and mercy. While the Pharisees and scribes rigidly adhered to the letter of the law, seeking justice through the stoning of the adulterous woman, Jesus challenged them to look deeper. He showed that true justice goes beyond mere observance of commandments. It is permeated by mercy, forgiveness and compassion, qualities that reflect the very essence of God's character. Jesus' response to the adulterous woman, neither do I condemn you, go and sin no more, invites us to contemplate the transformative power of forgiveness and mercy. In a world where hatred often seems to prevail, this message is a vivid reminder that forgiveness not only liberates the offender, but also the offended. It breaks the cycle of resentment and vengeance, opening the way for healing and reconciliation. A profound understanding of this biblical narrative goes beyond simply knowing the events that occurred. It leads us to reflect on the principles of faith and moral conduct. The story of the adulterous woman and Jesus' action of writing on the ground invite us to examine our own attitudes towards judgment, mercy, and compassion. It challenges us to question whether we are applying the law fairly and equitably, or if we are being swayed by rigidity and hypocrisy. Furthermore, this narrative reminds us of the importance of looking beyond appearances and recognizing the humanity in each individual. It invites us to practice forgiveness and seek reconciliation instead of simply condemning and excluding. Therefore, as we explore this story, we are not just studying an event from a distant past, but confronting ourselves with questions and dilemmas that continue to resonate in our lives today. 
A profound understanding of this biblical account can guide us in the pursuit of a more authentic faith and a more compassionate life. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please subscribe to the channel, leave your like, and click on one of the two videos that will appear to continue watching us. Hugs and stay with God.